Hey everybody. Um, well, this would be another short little thing for, well, we just need to clean up some room in the shop. Um, now this is where the meat and potatoes of the, of the conversion is going to be. You have to remember, I'm doing this just as long as, you know, many times you've done it. Um, eh, none. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get the tunnel out. I want to sectionalize out that so I can move stuff around, throw this stuff out into the junk pile. If I need to cut little bits and pieces off, I will. Because um, you always have to save it until the, everything is done. When everything is done, okay, then you can throw it away. Or if you have something else to replace it, okay, then throw it away. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut proud. This is the, this is the pinch weld right here. Oh, let me put this over here. This is the pinch weld uh, for the pan. It goes up here, goes down, and goes all the way down there. This one comes over. Oh, this one comes over here, comes up, goes down, and you can see the line in the um, in the undercoating. It goes down here, all the way down to the end. So we're going to cut proud about an inch on the other side. That way we can get the tunnel out. We'll clean up this, you know, clean the rust up and, and patch anything, and get it all squared away. So. Without better ado, let's just get this thing done. Well, let's go do the uh, back end. Let's cut some of that up. Not all of it, but let's just cut a little bit of it up. That way you can move it around. But now I can just drag all this shit out of here. Uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a uh, sawzall. Just get a quick cut here, 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 so I can undo the get undo the fuel tank. Um, and cut, you can see the seam right here on this. You'll also, when I cut inside here, you can also see um, where the supports from the buttresses or the seat pillar comes down and meets it. What I need to do is cut proud of everything. So I can um, grind off the excess and grind off that, the, uh, the bottom tub, and put this in. Because all this is, none of this is going to be used really. I mean the upper part right here, but I have to wait to get, on, get the uh, 5 plus 5 to graft it all on. Let's just do a quick cut right here. It's, and then I'll show you how we're going to cut the other stuff also. I'm going to go get my hair protection on, and eye protection, and let's do that. Okay, now we're in. All right, this is uh, what we want to save and what we want to cut. See the strut tower? Oh, I mean, this actually, even the wheel well right here. See this? This is where we want to cut the line, you know, like right on the inside. And we want to cut the line right on the inside here and cut it straight down. Look at all this lovely garbage. Uh, and cut, try and cut down. See, here's the. Uh, bottom part of this it goes onto the, the cage so we want to cut this like right here cut it up and let me try and move this over here then we're gonna you want to keep this right here so we can weld on so we don't need anything other than just what's around here so we can cut right here go straight over um, then cut in through here cut in through here you know and try and save as much as I can um, seeing how 
We just need to pull it through. Shouldn't be that bad. All right, let's get going. Keep this, then I'll bring the other one underneath and just slightly start to fit it and uh, and go from there. What we're going to be doing now is trimming up the rear suspension cradle, if you want to call it. It's not really a cradle, it's just a, the rear chassis part. As you can see, this is all rust. Cut that right out of here. But we, what we, the main goal is, this is all from a four by, uh, from a four door version, Audi 80 or 4000 in America. We want to cut all of this out. Now this, as you can see, it's all been pinch weld right here. This is this is how they affixed it at, at the uh, at the factory. What I'm going to do is just make a slice straight down, and I'm going to do the same thing on that. So this is just a rounded corner, okay? And that will be a rounded corner. So you bring it up, you fit it up, and you put a couple of tacks, and then you can do a, a bead weld all the way across, and without you know maintaining strength. And I'll do it on both sides. Um, will it be uh, a little bit uh, more weight? Oh yeah. It'll definitely be more weight. It, it's minuscule for the amount of strength that you're probably going to get because most of the, you know, if you're going to do a race car, you're going to seam weld all of the, you know, the stitch welding anyway. And after I clear out, you know, all the anything that's rust, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to chop. Okay, everything that's that's Audi 80, this, that, um, and run it, run it right down here. Just cut it straight down. And also, I put this on a movable thing. <laughs> As you can see, I'm gonna. This is where the bulkhead or the rear bulkhead attaches to the four pan. What I want to do is cut all of this because I want to use a bulkhead from the coupe, uh, and that way this will all be cleaned down. Um, you know, take stuff off. You know, um, but we'll clean that all up. The biggest thing is. It's not so much, you know, watching me grind this stuff off. That's not your whole thing. The whole thing is the, how are you going to set this thing up to fit in there and to make it work. That is a big thing. Um, and you want to make it as easy as possible. I've tried fitting up different parts of chassis before with, you know, taking out the spot welds and all that. It's a pain in the butt because half the time it doesn't line up. And you have to remember, we're doing different year cars. When you have different year cars, you know, things change over years with the manufacturing process. Maybe they moved it just a quarter of an inch, you know, or an inch, or half an inch or a centimeter, or whatever you want to call it. Um, they moved it. So if this thing is all flat and that thing is just a ridge, we can sit there and when we have our jig set up, we can move it. You know, we'll put, I'll put a couple of tack welds in that so I can, you know, hoist it up inside there. And if it doesn't fit exactly, you cut the tack welds off. Just, just make sure when you do the tack welds, you can take your, your grinders, pop it and it'll pop, plop right down. That way you'll have um, this, you can move it around, do a little bit of welding and then seam weld it up and it should be straight. Uh, that is the big thing. So let's get right onto it and don't forget, you know, one thing I um, I like to use, I, you know, even though I'm, I'm pretty uh, bad about doing it, is I try and use a dust mask all the time, especially when I'm grinding and cutting and use hair and protection because I've had uh, uh, tinnitus and stuff like that, which I still have it. Um, but you want to try and just minimize it, you know. So let's uh, let's get on to just cutting this up and let's uh, let's try this. Take a look at this. It's all rusty. And it's, see, it's kind of be a change of game plan, okay? 
Now, what I thought I was going to do is, is going to be different than what I am going to do. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the Sawzall. Do it on that side. I'm just going to cut this completely right off. That's it. Just cut it completely right off. Because this, this is so rusty, the other side, I want to make it kind of equal. So I'm just going to use the inner walls along with the strut towers um, in the side. So let me go get the Sawzall. I'm going to just slice this off. Then we're going to take the grinder and grind and, and do the rest of it that way. So we'll just use the outer side. Because we have to extend these anyway for a Spork Quattro. Um, I'll just zip them off. It's, it's taken, took three discs with this. And I can't say it's worth it. Uh, no, it's not even worth it. No, not at all. So we're just going to cut the outer shell off, whether it's butt welded here, and then clean it up with a grinder. And that's pretty much it. We're at the point where we're done um, trimming it up. This is good enough to where we're going to put it in because after we put it in there, then we're going to go find out what is the best metal in there, what is the best metal in here. Put it together. That's all. Uh, let's go uh, work with the uh, back of the uh, Coupe GT and let's try and just stick this thing all together or cut things out and try and figure out what to stick together. All right, so let's go over there. It's the next day because I had to go think on how to set this up in here because even though I trimmed it up, I'm starting to look at it going, well, how much more can I trim? How much less can I trim? And then I started, you know, what you have to do is get out your handy dandy cheap tape measure. I got this from the freaking, you know, cheapcraptools.com store, you know, Harbor Freight. Um, yeah, it's a freebie. That's why I like it. That's the only thing, you know, if I don't get a freebie, I'd never go there. Uh, looking at the rear section, I had to use the engine crane. I propped it up to, to fit it in here because, a, you know, because I said before my shoulder's kind of fucked, but that's what it is. Um, and what I was looking at is that if you take a look at this portion right here, because that side's all rotted out, and you take a look at this, you're going... That is exactly the same. They use even the same, you know, there's even a hole right here. Um, uh, let's see. Let's bring this over here. Whoop. Hole right here. Hole right there. And they use the same part. And if you take a look at some of the Sport Quattro pictures, because um, I never worked on a, on a street car, um, or I never looked at a street car, I never worked on them. Um, I just saw Bruno's. Uh, Mouton's old car, but I never really looked underneath it to see exactly what it was. They had compression struts that went to the A-arm off of this. And I'm sitting there going, well, if it's a homologation special, why wouldn't they use this? That way, you just put a bolt inside here, a nut and a bolt, and you can do the compression strut. And this can be used as a compression strut on both sides. And there we go. Um, so... <laughs> Matter of fact, then I'm going to keep this. So I'll keep this structure. This is all really solid. This is beginning to rust. That side is completely rotted over there. And what I'm going to do is I, I measure this to here, pretty much like this. I'm looking at this going, oh, what's it roughly? And it's, oh, it's roughly 28. And you take a look over here, and you sit there and look roughly, and you know where you cut it, and it's like, oh, it's roughly 28 where the curve starts. You know what? Close enough. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm not going to have this. And if you take a look at this side, you know, it's roughly, you know, roughly five inches down here prior to this mount. Take a look over here, where it starts the downward taper, right here, look over here, and it's roughly five inches. So this support is probably the same as this support. So what I got to do is I'm going to take the sawzall, I'm going to cut 
I want to make sure I don't hit this, but I'm going to cut this straight down, or I cut this straight down. Um, let me pick up the camera here. If you take a look, uh, oh, take a look over here at the uh, frame rail, right? Let's see, I think you can see it. Right there, this car has been in an accident. Right there. So, cutting the frame rail out, you know what? Who gives a shit? Um, it's already bent. And we'll just replace it with that. Oh, we'll just, we'll graft in that side into there. And pretty much, you know, because, you know, what I'm going to do here is just make a line. Because here is the mounts that, that, that weld into the body, weld into the mount. So I want to bring it back probably, you know, centimeter, you know, and I want to cut it straight across. But I want to also make sure, if you want to take a look over here, where this is all rotted, if I can cut this to right here and weld it onto the good metal that's on that, I don't have to build a plate. And I'll have the brackets for a compression strut. I think that's a win-win all the way around. So let's get uh, busy. Let's first mark this and we'll cut this um, with the Sawzall because it'll be a nice, quick, clean cut all the way across. There's really nothing there. And that way I can, you know, cut, well, I have to drop it down on, on this because this right here is supporting on the back so it doesn't flip over. Uh, and that way I can, um, get the thing down there, cut that, throw that shit away, and then I will cut that, cut those frame rails out, and then we'll just be plating them on this. So let's get, let's get working! a lot of work <laughs> but if we're gonna get what we want we need it and you know, not want to spend any money well the trade-off is money for time you know and if I have time I'm gonna do it all right we're still fitting um, it's really tough getting this thing in. Uh, what you didn't see off camera is all the swears that I did. So, I'm going to try and make it relatively close. So, how I'm going to do it is this frame rail seems to be the same as this. Because it goes all the way back. Now, what I'm going to do right here, it's pretty much right at that cusp, four and a quarter inches. So, what I'm going to bring down here, I'm going to go up. Up, 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 four and a quarter inches. Excuse my gloves, but four and a quarter inches is right there. But I'm going to bring it down to four inches and cut that. So it'll give me room to uh, figure out what's going on. And that way I'm going to cut down inside there cut this all down and pull that across that way I can do the same thing over there and see how close I can get this Wow huh. okay we will see how close I can get this because it'll drop yeah this will yeah that'll drop back that'll go back up so let's just uh, pop that in let's just give this a quick uh, blast and I'll cut it a little bit more actually I'm probably gonna cut a little, cut a little bit more proud
Good morning, everybody. Um, well, in the realm of movie magic, you're seeing us in the same video, but it is the next day because uh, A, the battery ran out on that, and I got so frustrated, I just wanted to get the hell out of here. Because it just wasn't working. Nothing was fit, nothing was working the way I was planning on it. And my biggest thing is, I keep learning from all this, because this is my first four quattro conversion. You guys are seeing it, I'm seeing it for the first time. And what we're looking at is, I was really something interesting because I could not figure out where I could actually put this, where it's gonna actually relationship up except for where the width of the frame rails were. Now, and that is kind of, you know, hit or miss, depending on how much undercoating and how much you scrape away and see what you get. Then I was looking and going, what's this? And I pull this up. This is the bolt hole for the, uh, um, uh, for the seat belt in the bottom, and they put them in every single place. Hopefully, this camera is going to go over like this, maybe it'll look better. Um, right here. So then I peel this up. You can't really. See. It's underneath here. Is the bolt hole here? And what? Uh, I'm sitting on. Well, jeez. I have the bolt holes right here for the um, seat belts right here. Why don't I just measure down? Because they should be in the same relationship and just cut where they are. So, if you take a look at it, if you're going from from basically the center of the hole to the where the line was cut, you're looking at uh, see a, an inch and three eighths. And so, if I go over here, and I take this bolt hole, and I put it right there, and I go down an inch and three eighths, right there, mark it, right here. Now look over here and it's the same thing. Uh, yeah, it's probably, yeah, inch and three eighths. If I come down here, center of the bolt hole, so it's inch and three eighths. That will give me the initial um, measurement to uh, draw a line. And we get on our handy dandy ruler. You go inch and three-eighths there, then the inch and three-eighths here. So what I'm going to do now is with a sawzall, I'm just going to start here, cut all the way across, and put this in. And, or try and put it in. <laughs> that's, that's the million dollar question. But I'll, it's, let's see what happens, you know. Um, I'm going to have to uh, adjust it anyway. At least I can put it in. At least it's, this is, this will be a relative to where it's supposed to be, uh, uh, in just in relationship to the uh, um, to where the seatbelt is supposed to be. So let's just uh, cut it up. I mean, we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to do it. No ifs ands or buts about it. So let's just do that. It's to the point where now we can start trimming and trimming and trimming. You know, we're just slowly doing it. Um, I don't want to do too much on this because I just want to put this up inside. I want to get the quarters off, and that way I can go on the inside and do a little bit better, uh, better job. But let's for, let's uh, strap this thing in, and I'll, I'm not sure what I'm going to use, but I'll use something. Well, it's somewhat there. <laughs> ratchet strap that's uh, was holding on one of my Sierras on, on a trailer. Grabs, you know, pilfered that off of it. As you can see, I just put it on there. I wrapped it through the uh, top ridge. This is just sitting here. That's all it is. I got under the chain. I'm going to bring the thing down, put the thing on the uh, pallet, I mean on the uh, rolling dolly, so I can roll this thing around. And then we're going to measure up and figure out where to cut all the quarters and the actual hood line. So this is the most fun part next. but. This, as you can see, it's just in here, it's not welded. It, you know, it's nothing is parallel because I'm not gonna know what to do until I get actually in the chassis. When I get in the chassis, that's when everything has to align up. 
Um, yes, I'm a hillbilly. I don't know what I'm doing, but you know, as long as everything is mathematically equal, I think we're good. So let's bring this thing down. After sweeping up the area so the dolly will move, um, trying to figure out how to do it. I just don't want to throw it over and have a smash. What I'm going to do is turn it, get my tractor, put the bucket underneath it, just set it down and set it down on that. So that way we... <laughs> 